In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can make sure we're using the box shadow property in ways that aren't ugly, because as nice of a property as it is and as effective as it can be, if you're not using it properly, it just will make your site look super amateurish. And I don't want you making those types of mistakes. So let's go and look at how we can use it in nice and effective ways. So once again, I'm in CodePen. This time we're actually going to be looking at three different code pens, but as usual, they are linked down below so you can come and play around with the code if you want to. Um, so the very first thing with a box shadow is it's important that you use low opacity. So let's just bring in a really simple one here. We'll give it like a 25 pixel blur and we'll just make it black. And when that comes in, it's not looking so hot. And even let's add a little bit of spread to this. And my goodness, there is a drop shadow. Uh, but the shadow is almost overwhelming, so it, it just doesn't look very nice. And I see way too many people do stuff like this. Um, or they do come in with an RGBA value, so just to lower the opacity. Just to make this a little bit easier to read, I'm going to put RGBA on its own line. So I'm just going to put a line break there, but it's all part of the same thing. Um, and so let's come in with black. So black is easy in RGBA because it's a whole bunch of zeros. And then I'll see something like 0.75. That's great that you're lowering the opacity, but you haven't lowered it enough. Let's bring that all the way down to 0.25. Now things are starting to look a little bit better. So all we've done is lower the opacity, but man, that's already a lot better. It's not great by any means, but it's less in our face. I don't think it looks great, but it's passable. Uh, I'm just going to come here and actually take this spread off and bring that down to zero. By removing the spread, it, which was making our shadow bigger than it needed to be, there are reasons to use spread, but this wasn't a very good use case. It just made the shadow bigger for no reason. It's almost like you're going, well, there is a shadow here and I want to make sure people see it. Now, though, it's starting to look good. Now, I know some of you are going to be screaming at me saying it's way too subtle. You can barely see it. That's sort of the point here. But if you really need to make your shadow stand out a little bit more, try coming in with a little bit of vertical offset, something like 5 or 10 pixels just moves it down a little bit. It's going to make it a little bit darker on the bottom because it's the, um, the way it's working, right? So we have lose a little bit on the top, we gain a little bit on the bottom, so you can definitely see it more, uh, but still really, really subtle. So we went from a super strong, black, not very subtle shadow to this super subtle shadow. Box shadows should always be very subtle, unless you're using them in hacky ways, which we'll be seeing in another video. The whole point is to slightly enhance your design by adding a little touch. Because really, what are shadows doing? They're adding depth to our design. They're saying that this box isn't sitting right on top of the background, it's actually hovering a little bit over it. It's giving it some elevation. If you have a really strong shadow, it's like your main source of light is a flashlight. We don't want a flashlight to be our main source of light, I wouldn't think. So as I just said, shadows add some depth or elevation to things. And the size of the shadow affects how far off something appears to be. So let's go take a look at this second example I have where I have these two boxes. I've called one box lower and the other one box higher. This is the higher one right here. So this is the one we're going to focus on for the beginning and later we'll make a small modification to the next one over there. So if I want to make this box higher actually appear higher up than the other one, which value out of all of these do you think I should change? Think about it for a second. So what it is, is it's the blur. And if you don't believe me, take a piece of paper and hold it over the table, but hold it close to the table and look at the shadow. The shadow probably has some pretty hard edges. And then slowly raise the paper higher and higher. The shadow is going to get blurrier and blurrier as you lift it. It's probably going to get a little lighter too as the light sort of gets more dif diffuse. Um, so in this example, I have made my shadows a little bit darker just because it makes it easier to illustrate what's going on. So here on this one, if I actually change this all the way up to 60 pixels. Now, when it first happened, you might not notice it, but now take a look at the two of them. Let your eye travel from one to the other one, and you're going to see this one looks a lot higher up than this one. This one looks like it's close to the background, and this one looks like it's hovering much farther up. And you can even enhance it a little bit more if you wanted to by just coming and changing the opacity and lowering the opacity of it. Um, would even amplify that effect a little bit more, but you want to make sure you can still see them. I'm going to leave it at 0.5 just to show you still see for sure there's a big difference between the two there. And the same principle applies if you're using inset spacing as well. Um, so if I just came on both of these and said inset, 
uh, to move the shadows inside. This one looks like it's really close to the background, and this looks like it's much further away because it has the much bigger shadow on it. Uh, this is probably a little bit more effective. Maybe let's just drop this to 40. Um, you still start getting the same idea though. Let's take those insets off. Um, and just to highlight it even more, here my blur is 15. Let's make that blur 5. So now it's looking like it's even closer than it was before. This is just, just, just off my background and this one's hovering way far away from my background. Uh, normally you wouldn't have differences this big, but it just really highlights the difference between the two and the visual difference you can do. Um, now if you are playing around with blurs and other things like that, one thing that's really important to avoid is make sure that you don't have offsets that are going in opposite directions. Right now I have a, just a 5 here and a 5 here, so it's a really small offset. Um, I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger, just to highlight uh, what I want to be doing. So if I do that at 15, it actually still works pretty good, even if this is um, just, it sort of still matches with where the light source is coming from. But what I wouldn't want to do is have a negative 5 on one of them and a positive 1 on the other. That just looks really weird. And to make it even look weirder, let's just put the blur the same on both. So this one has a shadow on the top and this one has a shadow on the bottom. The shadow is indicating, the direct, the offset is helping indicate the direction of the light source. So if we have two different boxes or more than two boxes with offsets going in different directions, it just becomes confusing. Where is the light coming from? It doesn't really make much sense what's going on here. Uh, so just make sure you avoid things like that because it just gets kind of weird. Uh, so let's bring that back to how we had it before. Great, so I hope that highlights how we can see that there, the differences in elevation by playing around with your shadow. To highlight how this works even more, let's go and jump over to this third example. All right, so what I've done on this one here, we have our little lonely box all by itself. And when I hover on top, it gets bigger. And when I go off, it gets smaller. So just a really simple um, transform and scale on this one with a transition just to make it a smooth transition. Now, because the shadow isn't changing, it looks like the box is physically getting bigger along with the text inside of it. Um, but it doesn't look like the elevation is changing. It really is just my box is getting bigger and smaller. If I wanted to make it look instead like my box is getting closer or going farther away, we can do that. But it means on hover, we also have to modify the shadow. So let's just copy the existing shadow that I have right now. And I'm using the same principles I was just looking at before. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come and give this a really big blur. And on my transition here, uh, I'm also gonna transition my box shadow for 300 milliseconds, so it's the same duration. Now just a quick note on this, for performance reasons, it isn't really the best practice to do a transition with a shadow. Um, it should be limited to things like transforms and scale and opacity. Um, but for this example, I will be doing it and you'll see it used occasionally, but just be aware that for performance, it can knock it. You might get it like a jittery animation or, um, or some problems because it causes some repaints to be going on. Um, so if I do that and now I hover on top, see how my shadow gets bigger and smaller? Now, maybe 100 pixels was a bit too much. Let's go with like 70. And I think that looks pretty good. So now, instead of my box looking like it was getting bigger and smaller, it really looks like it's being elevated up off of the page, which is really cool. Now, because the offset here was five down, I'm actually gonna make this one about 15. Um, so it's, I think, just a bit more consistent with the light source as it moves off the page. So it looks like it's really moving a lot. So you can see it's it's bouncing all the way up and all the way down. So it gives you that artificial look of it coming closer to the person as they hover on top instead of it just growing and shrinking. Now, if you are doing this, one thing that's really important, make sure that your blur is enough. Now, too big, it's going to look really weird. 100 looked probably a bit too big. And now 150 is probably even way too much. But also, I'm at 20. And if I just made this 40, um, the change isn't enough. The blur is increasing, but it's not increasing by enough for how much my box is increasing in size. And that can make it a weird sort of feeling for the person. Is it getting closer? Is it growing? Like what's what exactly is going on here? It's a little bit confusing. So you might have to play around with your numbers a little bit when you're doing this um, until you get to something that you think uh, is, you know, it looks good and is working. Just like on this example, to really get the difference in elevation that you want between two different items, 
uh, you'll want to play around with it a little bit. Now, if you do want further reading in that, I'm going to put a link down below in the description that talks about material design. It's they're just on their shadows because there's a lot of thought that the material Google did with material design that really dives into the whole ele idea of elevation. Uh, and it's really interesting. And if shadows are something you want to learn how to use properly in your design, I'd really encourage you to check it out. Um, also, think about that when you're overlapping content. So here, my lonely box, if I came on this, and we added um, an inner box. Um, so we add in that inner box. So let's come and style this up, inner box. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of padding and a box shadow on here to start with. Uh, so zero, let's try five pixels, 20 pixels, RGBA. I'm doing the same thing I had on my original box. Um, so if I do something like that, oops, I didn't put a hyphen on this one. There we go. So my inner box, the distance, and I'm going to take off actually the hover because I want to be able to go on top of here. Um, so this box, the disc, the shadow that on this one is the same as the shadow on this one. So if you're looking at the way the elevation is working, it's sort of like it's up a little bit and then it's the same distance between this and here, right? So we're sort of like stepping our way up. So if I wanted to make it look like this is just a little bit on top, I could bring that down. And now, you know, it's I'm layering my content. I have several layers of content um, that are building up. But just remember, it's always in relation. You're not always focusing on the background. But where this can get interesting is if you have it overlapping on multiple things. Um, so if I do position, position relative on here, and then I come down onto this and I do a position, position, absolute, bottom, negative, 25 pixels, let's go with. Uh, and we should probably give this a white background. Background, white. There we go. Um, so one thing you want to watch out for this is now my shadow on this one doesn't really make sense anymore. Because this distance looks like it's less than this distance, but it's also going on top of this one. That just doesn't work, right? You can't be closer to the background even though you're on top of this. So when you're layering things, if you're going to have layers that are overlapping, take that into account. So here my blur is 20. On this one, my blur might be 35 or something like that, um, just to really give it more of the appearance of being a little bit higher up. So this has a more diffuse uh, shadow on it, making it look like it's hovering up even higher. So just be careful with that when you are creating your, um, your shadows and your layers on everything here. And just as a last note, just always remember, going all the way back to the very beginning when we made this, always remember why you're adding shadows. We're not adding them just for the fun of it, and it's not to make shadows that just stand out, because st shadows that stand out are going to ruin your design. You want to add them to add depth to your design. And we want to keep our shadows as realistic as possible, and in general, as subtle as possible. Something like this looks pretty good. It's a nice subtle shadow. If you really wanted to, don't be scared of also doing like here, I'm going to bring it down a bit, but then I'm going to add in a negative spread. So say I do negative 10 pixels here. Um, so now my shadow, it's changing the way the light is working. It's looking like the light source is a bit higher up because it's only casting the shadow on the bottom here. It's not casting it all around. So I've just changed where my light source is coming from. So play around with things like that, but make sure you're consistent with your light sources and that your shadows are very subtle. They are not meant, they shouldn't be things that really stand out. Strong shadows look weird, they look amateurish. And I don't want you having amateurish shadows in your designs. Now you know better and you shouldn't be having stuff like that. So I hope I gave you some insight. If you're using box shadows and you have some other tips or tricks, please share them down in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Thank you once again to my patrons for making this video possible. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.